Hi, it's Leo from Made by Marley. And Ginny from Mumshed. So Ginny has came to stay, those that don't know Ginny, Ginny is our brand ambassador for Made by Marley and she's my pal, so she's came here to paint. So today we had two incredibly ugly mid-century modern bedside cabinets and follow along and see what I made and what I made. <laughs> so, um, carry on. Okay, so this is what we started with. They are, I think, they're mid-century modern. They're they're pretty ugly, Ginny, aren't they? They are very ugly. They are very ugly. The top, we have decided, looks a bit like a toilet, but we do tend to rectify that, so it's okay. Um, there's nothing really much to talk about them. They're, they're bedside cabinets. They've got the ugliest feet known to man. We, we do intend to fix that as well, Ginny, don't we? We do indeed. We do, Ginny. We do. Right, Ginny, what colours of paint are you using today? Today I'll be using Amsterdam Green, Olive and Provence. And I'm going to be using Oxford Navy, Duck Egg Blue and Greek Blue. And Ginny, what theme have we decided? Today we've decided on woodland theme. A woodland theme. So obviously my woodland's going to be in the dark. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I feel wrong, but never mind, we're, I'm working on it, it's fine. So um, we're going to get on, Ginny and I, and we're going to put our base coats down and um, maybe just use one as our base coat and just we're going to base coat our furniture, get it dry, and then we're going to come back and show you what finishes we're going to put on top of our base coat. Okay, so me first, and I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. So I am going to do a nighttime sort of woodland sort of thing. So I've just put some blues here. That's the duck egg blue. That's the geek blue. I put a little bit of original white and a little bit of Athenian black. And how I'm, if you, we treat it into three, so one, two, three. So I'm going to show you on the drawer side first, and then I'm just going to repeat it off camera on these two sides. So I'm wanting, I'm going to be doing I'm just going to be kind of doing a sort of different sort of colours, using these colours, kind of blending them together just to kind of get a feel for what's going to go over the top of it also. I'm not probably going to think a little bit too much about it. I'm just going to wet my brush first before I start. And um, I think I'm going to start with some of the darker colours around the edges first. I just want to water that down a wee bit. Um, so I've got more water in here. I'm just kind of framing it out with the darks and we'll work into the lights. So that's the darks. Now, I'm going to maybe have to do some of this because my paint is quite fresh and it's really shiny underneath and it's probably going to ha want to have a wee bit of a, a wear off. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to bring some of this blue down here and take in some white in the middle. And what I'm doing here is I'm just playing with my colours on the front until I get what I think is going to be quite good for me to work behind. I'm just bringing that out to the black. And this is just about playing with it. I'm not um, I'm not going to get bent out of shape if it's not quite right for school. Now, once I've got where I think I want, these are going to be, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go back over it and I'm just going to play around with it to get it to move a little bit and give me some sort of you see it's pulling off it's pulling off a little bit but I will go back over and we're trying to do all this um in one in one day <laughs> so it's a little bit if you think mm, I'm not quite sure about this bit just add a little bit more and you might need to add a little bit of water this is just setting the scene it's gonna do something like that I want my edges darker but I want a sort of focal point in the middle and that's why I'm putting the whites on. So is this is part is just really kind of like you playing around with your paint and you're gonna take have to take a little while to get it right. And I am gonna to have to fiddle maybe about with this a little bit more off camera. I'm scared to add too much water because of the the lift. But in a minute, I'm gonna show you what to do with that lift if you think, mm, how am I gonna repair that? I know I'm adding more water and I'm trying not to um, put this back in here. I'm trying to take some of this black and put this back in down the bottom. So I'm going to fiddle around with this a little bit more off camera, but you can see where this is going. I'm wanting to have lighter in the middle. So where this part here is, 
I'm just going to show you what to do with it. You dry it with a heat gun, paint over the top of it and leave it and then give it a little bit more heat. You can tell with paint, if you touch your paint like this and you've been heating it up with a heat gun, it'll start to feel warm, but it'll, so, it'll soon cool down. And if your sides feel cold, your paint isn't ready to paint over it. If, you, if your paint starts to feel sort of the same sort of temperature as the room you're in, you know you're pretty good. So we were kind of rushing to do this. So all I'm going to do is paint over this, let it dry, and then just bring my blend back over it. And now I'm going to go away and play a little bit more about this. Right, Ginny, over to you. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to do a blending, like a messy blending technique. I'm just putting on two paints together from the tub and just kind of zigzagging the paint on and fanning it out a bit. Just, I'm not being precious about it. Just dabbing on three colours I've got together. It's really good that as well because it gives it loads of texture, doesn't it, Jenny? It gives yep. it like more dimension. I'm um, all about the texture. I yeah. do like texture. Yeah, unless it's my wrinkles. We're not having any of that. No. <laughs> and I'm just going to do this all over the whole piece until I'm happy with how it looks. Okay, so I've decided sort of when I put, because I'm going to be putting a moon up here, I think. I think before I do much more, I've decided to introduce some, maybe some yellows. So I'm just going to use some Versailles, which is a sort of yellowy cream, and English yellow, which is obviously a yellow yellow. Um, what other kind of yellow is there? Um, well, there's an ochre, I guess. But um, And I'm just going to wet my brush again, and I'm just going to play about adding some yellow into this. So just it's just so when you come back and you go, that didn't look like that a minute ago. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to introduce a little bit of yellow into this. Okay? Okay, so off camera, I repeated the same finish that I showed you on the front, on the sides, and on the top. So it's pretty much all this sort of model look all around it. And you saw how I achieved that. Next thing what I'm going to do is... Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to try my best. And this is just going to be quite rough. Oh, see, very rough um, to draw a moon. Oh, that's interesting. I can fix this off camera. Um, yeah, I'm not wanting it. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Just have a go. So I'm just drawing that on my chalk so I can wipe off my marks. Yeah, I'm thinking that that's pretty, pretty much how I'd like it. Now, I'm going to be painting that in, in a minute. Um, so just so you know, I'm going to start with this sort of kind of light colour. And I'm going to start fiddling about with my colours to get a sort of moon, um, a moon colour. But you you understand what I'm what I'm going to be doing here. This is going to be a moon. But just for the, pro the process of moving this along, let's just say this is my moon. Um, I can come back and I can... Finesse this off camera. So here is my moon shape. But I'm just kind of just even though I'm just kind of rushing through this, I just want a straight and nicer edge there. We'll get to that in a minute. So there's my moon. But let me just introduce what stencil I'm going to be using. It's funnily enough a wisteria stencil. I know wisteria in a woodland at night. I'm 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 pushing it all, but I'm pushing the boundaries. But let's go. Um so I'm just going to start with some kind of form of movement up up here. Um, I want this a little bit thicker, thicker here. So you've all you've seen me draw branches before. Branches are not that not that tricky, and I'm obviously going to have to size out my size of where these are going to go. And I'm going to run this. I'm going to run it up around the sides as well. So, but I'm going to maybe. And I have to shorten this one because these are too small and these are too big. Uh, these too big. I don't know. Anyway, let's just try with one. And yeah, I know it's all dark and glorious on my piece so far, but of course, I need to have a little bit of colour in this. So I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to be doing these stencils, pink, pink flowers because I like pink. So the pink I'm using is Capri Pink. I'm just going to put a little bit down here on the board where my feet are. Not my actual feet, the feet of the, t the table. And a little bit of, no, that's not what I wanted. And a little bit of Old Ochre, which is a cream. So I'm just going to mix these together. But the first colour I'm going to do is 
I'm going to just kind of start somewhere here. So when you're using these kind of stencils, kind of think about where your piece of your branch is. I'll go back and paint the branch. I'm kind of rushing through this. It's just so you know what I'm doing so that I can go away and, and kind of do it. So I'm going to start with a white, first of all. Yeah, I think I'm golden at that. And I'm just going to run this round. I'm not using a stencil brush because, well, I'm just this is the first brush that I've picked up. So once I've got some of the white on here, and the trick is with this is you can load up your brush, but to make sure that you have um, you have enough paint onto your stencil, but you don't want it, you, but you also want to have a little bit in the centre because I'm going to be mixing the paint through this uh, while it's still white so that I'm not having a full, it's not going to be all come out full white. It's going to have a sort of blend in the stencil. I think that's going to be green, so I better not. I can come back in. You can you can keep putting your stencil back on if you think I don't want to do it this way. I would rather just come back and do my white first and then my pink. But just for an example, because I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. Um, put it in like this. Is I'm going to start now dipping in the pink. Now you can do two ways. You can kind of think about how it would be. Um, so something like this on the edges. Or you can just get a full bit more pink on it and do some sort of darker. So you're just kind of touching it up. Just where you think it's going to be. So where the light is, because you're going to have some lighter shades and some sort of darker shades. And you can also just run it in it and make a different colour of pink as well and make it a full one. So this is just about sort of trial and error. And I'm just going to lift my stencil in a moment. And it's not going to make a whole load of sense contextually as the piece right now because uh, I'm only showing you a little part of it um, but I'm going to get I'm going to do this before we move on Ginny can talk about her piece but um, I'm going to be placing this back on just so that I can fix it but this is how this is going to look as it comes down so something like this so I'm going to continue this all the way down but really what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go away try and fix up my moon and start painting my branches in before I do any more of this okay I have given mine another messy second blend coat and I've decided to go with a Annie Sloan stencil called Meadow Flowers which I'm going to dab on with Athenian Black by Annie Sloan and after I've done this I'm gonna paint on some green freehand leaves and I may even put some poppies on yet. I don't know. Oh, Ginny. Sorry. There you go. Rather noisy. Some people like to dab. Some people like to do swirly motions. Swirly, like twirly. Swirly, twirly. Yep. I think it depends. I think on it the... depends on yourself. Yeah. Doesn't it? And uh -huh. it I think it depends as well on what you feel comfortable and the results you've had previously. If you've had kind of tough results doing different things, then you tend to go back to what it was that you you didn't have the tough results. Sorry. I just realised that off camera there I just dipped my white brush in Ginny's black paint. But <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm, and Ginny, Ginny will just have to improvise with that. I, you can't see me making a mess over here. Okay, so off camera, I finished my moon. There's a little bit of finessing to do around the edges still, but where I'm kind of getting there. I just need to kind of like go around here and get rid of this sort of pen. I've done this much of the wisteria, and now, as I said, I was going to do, but I'm just showing you me doing it, is I'm just kind of hand painting now in the branches. I haven't putting leaves on it yet because I'm going to be putting some stamps on this as well. You know, I may as well just be all in here so I'm just gonna go I'm just going through it all through my wisteria and putting these back up putting these branches back on and that is literally all I'm doing you haven't missed anything the the parts that you saw me stencil here I just continued doing with here I just put a little bit of shade in my moon and I'm just doing the brown Ginny over to you what are you up to well I am um, I've done my stencil and I'm now adding uh, with a script brush some freehand uh, grasses. I'm using Annie Sloan's fur at the moment, but I may add in some more different colours uh, to make it pop. Okay, so all I'm doing now, there was a like a leafy thing that went with this, with the leaves obviously, and what I'm doing is I'm just starting, I did the 
center panel of the wisteria the white blue and now i'm just using a sort of different color blue and all i'm going to do is i'm going to start to make it sort of a little, slightly more fuller round about some of these branches and i'm just doing the same thing now there's a there's another piece on this stencil that i'm going to use as well um this one here so i might use this part because it's if i put it on this way it's what i can put the little pink parts on the screen so i'm just going to kind of try and fill this out i'm not going to keep showing you me stencil and things you've seen me stencil a million times you're not seeing anything different than you would you wouldn't usually see so i'm just going to kind of work my way down the piece and i'm kind of just going to keep adding on these different colors and sort of the kind of mid blue which is the duck egg and this blue which is a little bit of Provence but a little bit of Provence and a little bit of Amsterdam green well unfortunately I've jumped the gun and uh, <laughs> I've got in the zone and I've added some pencil uh, flowers daisies and I've used a Posca pen and added in some texture on the thingy I'm gonna add some more stenciling to do the leaves of the daisies um, and I'm going to see where we go from there. So all I've been doing is just running my design from the front up around the sides and I'm going to be doing that on the sides and the top. So on my uh, daisies I've added a little bit of speckle of gold and I'm going to do some gold stencil leaves in here to tie it in to do three Freeze is always better. Um, and then I'm going to paint the feet gold so it makes it cohesive. And then I think I'll be done. Okay, so I'm still doing exactly the same thing as I've been doing for quite some time, which is stenciling on these wisteria. I want to say they're something else, but they're not. There is definitely wisteria. At first I thought they were hollyhocks or fox gloves i'm not sure but no they're definitely wisteria so i'm just doing i'm just i'm just literally going over what i showed you before all i'm doing is putting the paler color on and coming back in with the pink and just making sure that i'm sort of kind of accenting it giving it some low lights that's all i'm doing in case you are you're wondering what what it is i'm still doing all i'm doing is still going around all of this um just to make sure that i've got all of this done and I'm just still adding my little leaves. I haven't really kind of progressed. There's just a, it's a lot of stenciling in this one, but I don't want you to think, well, she didn't really do much or show as much on this one. But it's just these are the kind of projects you can really home your stenciling in on. So find a stencil that you like, and then practice with your stencil. If you're not, if you're still not confident getting your stencil and just right, practice on boards, and then you can really find that stencils are awesome. They're much cheaper. They're reusable. They last forever. What's not to like about stencils, Ginny? Love stencils. Yeah, see, I mean, in any sort of good craft armory, I always think you should have some good stencils because they are the thing that will see you through. And they're my kind of first, before anything else, go to of what I've got when it comes to stenciling. It was kind of tricky for Ginny today to find stencils in my stash because, to be honest with you, I think it's all Indian and I think she was looking for something non-Indian and the really funny bit was I think I picked the only stencil in the whole bunch that wasn't, wasn't Indian. Indian. So that left a little bit of a struggle. So that's what happens when you sell bohemian furniture. So anyway, that's all I've got to say on stencils right now. We're moving on. All I'm doing now is just putting a, light, a little tiny highlight on the top of the branches so if the moon was shining on it, that's where it would be hitting. And I'm just doing running my brush really lightly just along the centre of here quite holding my brush quite loose brush got a funny kind of funky bend on it but it it's, doesn't do the job just I'm just kind of like um just kind of like putting the sort of definition back sometimes when you use stencils you maybe want to put a bit sometimes the stencil look is just exactly what you're looking for other times you just maybe want a little bit of sort of definition in in the middle of it depends on you what you want to do but um, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just kind of like working my way around and anything that I think that needs a little bit of something, I'm just giving it, it but it's just to give it that sort of kind of like maybe more a little bit more of a painterly look, but it's entirely up to you. So I'm just, I'm nearly, nearly, I'm keeping, creeping closer. I'm just, I've got the top to finish now and Ginny's doing her gold feet. 
she's painting her feet gold um on her piece so she's all um creeping closer as well so um jenny have you anything to add um no i'm looking forward to finishing off the gold and then putting some wax on it yeah okay so i've got a bird from an old retired set from birds blossoms and branches and i've stamped him up with iod ink no stays on ink and um i'm just putting him on here i don't know whether i'm gonna maybe just kind of adjust them once he's stamped on in black i'll maybe just put a bit of color on him maybe a little bit pink and make him look a little bit tropical i mean i don't know how my woodland theme ended up a little bit like this <laughs> it's okay it's night time there are some bushes and there's a few trees and there's a moon that's as much woodland as you're getting the rest and a bird the wisteria was a bit left field I'm just, I'm not going to lie, but never mind. We're here now, so this is where we have on. So I'm just going to finish off this little birdie now. And I will also be ready, just like Jenny, for waxing. But let's just have a wee look at him and see what I think. Yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on the bird. Um, just with a fine liner, with a, an artist brush. Just a little bit of paint just to bring him out and make him look like he's actually on the branch. That might help. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then, well, that's as I'm waxing. Okay, so we're at the wax stage now. We've both got wax. Uh, somebody's been asking, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name, a subscriber, about Sealer. And I am going to do a video on Sealer, but I think she was kind of wanting to know what's the skinny on Sealer. It's really up to you, what you how you seal your piece. If your piece is for yourself or you're going to let your piece cure really well with your wax, then it, it's going to stand up to it. It's, it's going to be pretty good. If you are selling and you have a surface that is a high traffic area, I would put a tough coat sealer on top. She also asked me, I think it was the same person, what the difference between a sealer and a lacquer is. Lacquer is just lighter. And But what I'm going to do is... I am going to very soon do a video on paint and I'm going to line them all up, chalk synthesis, chalk mineral, um, chalk paint, uh, self-sealing, self-leveling, all-in-one paints, uh, lacquer, wax, sealer, and, and polyacrylic. What's the difference between a polyacrylic? Yeah, I'm going to do all of that in a whole video and paint one piece with maybe not all the sealers but i'm going to do one piece with all of the paint so that you can see a how they behave do they play well nice do they play well together don't they and what you can do with them all and um that should be quite a good video but uh, as yet yeah, it's still up here it hasn't gone anywhere but it is coming shortly so judy and i have both chosen wax today i chose wax just because there's a lot of colors on this and it's going to bring out the colors jenny did you pick your wax for any particular reason no, I more, tend more to go for wax rather than a polysealer. So sometimes as well, would you say that it's down to your individual sort of taste? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's how you seal your piece, where you think it's going to go, who's going to have it, how much you want it to last, how much you don't. It really, it's all a matter of personal taste, I, I, I think that. And sometimes as well, I mean, just from a personal point of view, Waxing can be, oh, oh yeah, oh, you need all your muscles for a bit of wax and then you're wiping off your excess where sometimes sealer, you just gliding it on and you're leaving it. But it's, it's really it's not much in it, I don't think. Sometimes it's just personal preference. So we're going to get on now and waxing for those that have never waxed before. You just need some wax and a wax brush and you just wax your piece. And that's what you do. And if you, at the very end, think you've got too much on it, you can just wipe it off. And all the wax does is it just kind of... Um, kind of yeah just just seals it that's it right we're gonna get on and do that okay so that's it that's us for today um you saw what we did um i painted mine i did sort of sort of kind of blendy water down a slightly frottage look and then put the stencils on did the moon brought in a bit of highlight changed the handles nothing really that spectacular but we've really changed a really ugly piece of furniture that looked a bit like a toilet seat. Jenny, what did you do? I 
did a kind of a messy blend with three colours. I added some stencils, um, did a bit of painting, hand painting some leaves at the bottom and added and put on these lovely handles. There you go. That's it. Word on the street. All you need to do is get some paint and some stencils and stencils are really um, cost effective way to do up furniture that doesn't cost you a lot of money and you'll have them in your car stash for years because if you buy a thicker mylar, mylar in your stencil they'll last and you can use them in so many different ways stencils as well so I'm all about the stencils um we have Ginny is kind of getting into YouTube so we, I'm going to put a little bit of a link at top um, for Ginny's um, YouTube channel if you want to go and check out Ginny's actually here to show me a product called I'm doing a lot of talking I'm sorry a product called Powertex and it makes fabric hard and she's came not just because she's came to stay for a holiday but she's going to be showing me a few things on how to add it to furniture so watch the space you're going to be getting that rammed down your neck for a few weeks and uh, once I know how to do it it'll be that every week for a week uh, but Ginny's going to show me how to do these things and so Ginny's going to do a sort of beginner's um, sort of video getting into it sort of video and Martin will put the link above to Ginny's channel um obviously Ginny's the lovely made by Marley decoupage um magic paper brand ambassador that is not easy for me to say um <laughs> so you can see all of if you do smalls and you, you're watching me do furniture and I'm using my own decoupage paper and you think yeah but I do smalls if you're looking for smalls ideas as I said go and check out Ginny's social media you'll be blown away uh that's it for today I really am going to stop talking so if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up consider sharing it leave us a comment like it and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you again next week and the lovely martin will obviously be there but um jenny do you want to say goodbye goodbye <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you again next week bye bye <laughs>